Welcome to Trans Guide to the first three days in New Orleans. I'm going to set you up with a powerhouse of an economy. Normally in a playthrough I might skip the rolling portion, but I'm going to leave it in just so that you can see that you do not have to have a min-maxed team in order to get the same results. We're just going to roll a couple times to get certain reasonable stats, like I want intelligence for the first guy. And as an added bonus, he's got max persuasion. For this next guy, command is fine. And for this last person, why don't we go with something like trading? Now, I just skipped over a 17 and 15 trade persuasion. That was actually pretty good. All right, she's, she's got 17 in trade. That's really good. I don't care so much about the combat. That's fine. Something to bear in mind is that you will have certain traits that are not related to the stats. But every star trait that you have unlocks the potential for a new power. In this case, if she had 15 combat or above, she can chop off heads. This guy, if he has 15 command or above, he can defend his hometown with double the power. Conrad, if he has 15 intellect or above, he can poison people. So everybody gets some sort of power unlocked when they have a star in their ability. We're going to also name these people. You are now king. You are prince. He's the uh, little brother of the king. Yeah, he's three years younger. And then we got Queen, if I spell it right. And then we're going to go ahead and just pick a... Uh, you can't change the name in this version of the game. Also, you can type something in. It doesn't actually matter. Nothing, nothing, nothing... Uh, it does not reflect that in any way. Now, this is not a playthrough. This is just a guide. For that reason, I'm going to actually be skipping through the story, but I will give you a synopsis of things that happen for the first event window that appears. If... A playthrough is what you'd like to see, be sure to let me know by hitting that like button. This long pop-up window just basically tells us that our queen is in danger and we need to go rescue her. Begin with, we're going to go ahead and remove one of the servants. In this game, instead of assigning people to jobs with some sort of uh, menu like this, as in RimWorld, you assign people to jobs through buildings. So this building allows me to have one servant and three builders. Oh, two servants and three builders. We only have seven people right now. So I'm going to be fine tuning our operations at the beginning. For example, I don't want any people working as a trader because they will only work from 18 to 2400. So we're going to just nip that in the bud. We're also going to immediately send. Prince out to run and convince the nearby village to send more migrants this round. Also, while he's yelling at the board, we're going to go ahead and assign a service warehouse. That'll get us started. I'm trying to unpause the game here, but right clicking was not working. It was probably lagging. The game has some huge memory issues. While they're working on that, we'll just slap down a library. I'm not going to worry too much about spacing. The point is I'm giving you a build order. The first thing you need to do is build a warehouse. This way you can double your builders. Of course, we're going to need to assign a king or anybody, any noble. Noble basically tells your people that they have a job to do. Otherwise, they just stand around the building doing nothing. So there's three builders, but they refuse to work without the king giving them specific orders. It does get kind of harebrained when you build a specific field for, say, rutabagas. You can only build rutabagas on it. And they will not do anything until a king comes over and yells at them. All right. So these guys, they are from the Great Hall. These are the three builders from the Great Hall. You can see I've selected this. So these arrows appear. And this guy here, he's the servant. He's just waiting. She's just waiting until 1700 to load this warehouse of food. The reason why we want one servant is if we wait till later, maybe say we wait till 1900 and then add a servant, it's too late. Your nobles will starve overnight and they, well, they won't die. They won't do any jobs while they're unhappy. So now we have two teams of builders. We're going to build twice as fast. Go ahead and let's see here. We'll just get a lumber mill going. Let's see. A barracks. Actually, the barracks is not super necessary right now. Uh, wrong button. But we will need to worry about finance in a or production in a minute. We do want a tavern. And I'll explain what these buildings are if you are new to Norland in particular. The library allows a nobleman to research. Um, technologies for you. And 
only technologies that uh, the nobleman is around for, you have access to. What I mean around, I'm talking about the prince is still around, but say the prince were to die, I, you would lose the technology that he understands. The dormitory just gives me 10 more slots for peasants to live in, but they will still live in your village without a home. Lumber mill gives one guy to work for chopping trees. Without that, we are going to have no wood income. The tavern will allow me to have another nighttime thing where they will drink alcohol, and drinking alcohol is how your characters restore their rest icon right here. Uh, I'm trying to hover over it. Mental fatigue from various types of work. To replenish it, use alcohol. All right, that, that gives us the next three buildings. I'd like them to prioritize that. Now, the tutorial tells you that you really should stick a, uh, say, a field on 100%. But here's the thing. If we were to squeeze in, say, 100%, this would actually take up a lot of other space for the other field. So this field would be, if we could even stick it, probably like 55%. So you'd have 100, a 50, and maybe a 60. So I'm going to intentionally place my rutabaga to a 91%. That's, I'm doing that on purpose because I can later place another field here at 96%, another field here like a 93%. This library being finished. Oh, wow. Was that? Okay. I actually was paused. I, when when you have a selection to build, it is paused. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and have the king learn how to mine. And we're going to go ahead and have, let's say, prince learn the rye and mill. So the rye gives you flour in the long run produced in a mill. Rye also helps you build liquor. See here it says we need rye and hops. Hop, we'll work on hops in a bit. got the two teams of workers still hauling butt. If we have enough time, we're going to get another dormitory out. And then we're going to go ahead and slap down, just in case, a slave barn. Just in case. It's unlikely the merchant will appear on the first day, but it's feasible. Speaking of which... If you've played this game at all, you may think that I just should have hired my mercenaries earlier, but it doesn't actually matter. They will arrive the evening after. So if I were to click on this guy with the 14 stat, and by the way, it's 20 gold per combat stat, and hover over it, it'll say 28 hours. That is tomorrow evening. So we're going to take all these people above 12. And we're going to leave that alone. We're not going to worry about these guys. We can pretty much make our own guys from about 0 to 3, and we can capture people about stat 5. So we're, we don't really need to pay 140 gold for someone we can just almost as easily raise ourselves. But these guys are pretty high stats. They do not show up within a year. And as far as I know, they stay in your colony forever. So I've just basically paid about 200 gold per person to join my colony. Now, if you change your mind, I can always click this. You see how I'm spending 1,200 right now? If I click the person again, they go back and I get a refund. You need to decide that beforehand. So the prince is currently just putzing around. He's going to go pray at home. Fine. He, he, I did tell him that he needs to study the rye field, but since he's not actually doing anything for me, we will go and tell him to go and just make that lumber mill work. Remember, they will not do anything until you tell them. So now we have enough room for 30 people. We are actually going to get 14 people today. 7 plus 14 is 21. If I only had two dormitories, I would be one person homeless on the street. I mean, he would still be with us, but he'd be sad. But we're going to let him have a whole dormitory to himself. Assign the prince to that. I know the prince is doing a lot of jobs. That's why the king, who is our smart guy, is working on the mine. So we can get the mine out right away. The rye field were unlikely to finish by today. And that's okay. We didn't quite finish the mine. Well, uh, he might still finish it today, but the, the evening or the day jobs are over. That music signifies that we're now entering the second phase of the day. We get migrants. They've already shown up on the left side of the screen. All these fancy people. They've also already immediately taken jobs, which means that they will expect to get paid. They're going to run over and the first thing they're going to do is get paid. 
if you don't like that and you don't need to like that, you can always reduce the jobs. Nobody actually worked this lumber mill, so I can actually say nobody, whoever the whoever claimed that position as lumber mill or lumberjack, he's not going to get paid for that. We can we can do that for all of this, and this is for a dual purpose. In this game, your pawns they lose stats and they get replenished stats by buying your resources. He needs food. Well, he de he doesn't just go up and take food uh, from a warehouse or a stockpile like you would in RimWorld. He has to come up and buy food by going to the uh, finance tab for him. And if he were paid five gold, he could buy flour. I'm not going to pay any of these people anything. Now, that might be a little mean, but first off, this gold is kind of a limited economy inside your own colony. So don't let it go to waste. If you want more gold, you need to take it from somewhere outside your colony. Second, they didn't lose any stats really, just moving on in. First off, I'm going to go ahead and reduce medicinal salve to zero. You can also hold shift click to move things by higher increments. And so this medicine will be free. And when someone gets hurt, I'm going to go ahead and just toggle that to how many people are hurt and they'll just take it for free. As for beer, we can just go ahead and bring this to max. It's fine. And so this means that as many people as want can buy beer if they choose to. Now, by the way, the reason why I put medicinal salve to zero is I've actually had soldiers spend all of their gold on beer and then die because they refuse to heal themselves. <laughs> Those are pretty hardcore soldiers. So yeah, medicine's free. That's that's just how I'm going to roll. As for the slaves, we're going to allow them also to have liquor. Even though none of these uh, drinks were default added, they will be very unhappy if they have no liquor. And maybe you don't care about that, but we're just going to roll with that. Nobody's going to have any meat yet, so we're going to have zero meat, zero salve, and we're not going to sell daggers to anybody. That's what we're doing in the finance window. If we take a look at these people and then compare their stats, you see that their mood is very high. They have no loss in sleep, food, or rest. Then we compare that to people who's actually been working. We see that, okay, yeah, these people will need food and drink. Remember that in order to raise rest, they need alcohol. For them to do that, I will pay them. For these other people, for these guys that just joined, no. They, they, don't, they don't need any cash. Let's sign somebody to trade. Alright, so the king finished the mine. So we can have the king work on the hop field and beer. He's going to go and fill up his belly on food at the moment, and then he's going to go study some. These, these migrants that just showed up is like, wow, this is great. Beer and a house. Wait till everybody shuts down for the night. And then we'll go ahead and start toggling these back on. All right, so now we only have seven jobless people. If we had just gone the normal way, I'd only be up to 14 people by this point. And I have basically the library, the lumber mill, and a field, and that's it. We have two extra buildings almost complete and two technologies nearly done. If I were a little bit faster by pausing all the time, I could have squeezed out a mine or at least the start, starting construction of it. But this is a guide. I'm just here to give you the concepts to give you enough to understand how to really start your day off right in New Orleans. So the king's taking a nap. Prince is just chilling because he's been in the book room all day, so he needs a bit of a beer to get over that. By the way, prisoner nobles will still work when unhappy, and I find it amusing to make your prisoner noble study how to make a scaffold for, you know, executions and stuff. <laughs> so he just collapsed something around from a beer overdose here. Called, <laughs> he's just drunk, essentially. And a prisoner literally showed up. This is a builder, by the way. A prisoner literally showed up to carry up. She's also, you got a hangover. <laughs> She's dragging the prince over. <laughs> Yeah, and I could queue up some commands, and we're going to do so once it gets to daybreak, so you can kind of see a little better. It's good enough. 
start assigning some stuff. We're going to want at least another house. We have three houses and three nobles. And what this is going to limit us to is anybody who travels and visits will need a Lord's Manor, even if they're just a uh, parasite, which pretty much all of them will be. We want maybe, we'll say two. We'll build more in the future. We will need a barracks because we did hire those mercenaries and I'm going to place it somewhere on the left. Everything that I've seen enters from the left, even if an enemy is attacking from, say, down, down right. right. So then we've got a couple buildings there. We have the mine complete, so we're going to go construction, resources, and mine. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and make the mine a priority because someone can start working on that right away. That's already finished. Lord's house will probably get finished at some point. These they're already working on, so they'll finish those. So this does not need to be a priority, but I would like that finished before evening. We have four projects to do, and I'm sure they'll get to that total. So we're going to go ahead and also assign a couple more lumber, one more lumber, lumber mill, we'll say like down here. And we'll make that a priority. Now, I don't have any fields left. Uh, research, I mean. I could make more rutabaga fields, but your characters, your pawns will enjoy having a other things that eat. So it is now daybreak. That was the conclusion of our first in-game day, but we'll call that day zero. Goes right back to the room, study. Now I'm actually going to cancel that management, all of these management tasks. Because they will just go back and start shouting, even if the orders are fairly clear. And maybe there is a production bonus, but I don't care about that. I need that technology. So the game is telling me that, hey, these four buildings need a manager. I'm okay with that. I want them to be studying. It looks like actually we're done with everything, so we can actually reassemble that. So the one who's not studying... Um, Prince is studying rye field, so we'll have King do stuff. King is not as good as Prince with this management, but that's fine. This payment to tax is, uh, we, we start off the game as a vassal to somebody. Go ahead and set that as a priority next. This mine is going to get underway right away. We're going to put the prince on this one. The prince has a better production bonus. So the stat here is their management. 11 points in management give me a, gives me a 60% production bonus. 14 points in management gives you a 98 production bonus. I've actually written down every single stat from 3 to 17 what their production bonuses are. We have until 1800 to get this barracks up and running, and it is going to finish. Good. Prince is taking a drink. I'm not too thrilled about that, because I would like to get the other fields up and running, but that's fine. It is now 1700, so we have just a little bit longer. We are not going to finish this field at any point. We're going to go ahead and put hops down. Actually, no, we'll put rye down right there. I want to make sure rye gets the best spot, because it is used both in flour as our food and beer as our drink. All right, so the hired warriors have arrived. This is the time where we need to go out there and save the damsel in distress. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get... The, oh, wait, the traitor is here. Okay, that's good. Additionally, we have a wandering nobleman. I would say hire him. Hire them all the time. I mean, unless they really, really suck. He's got nine persuasion, which does mean that he's going to be resistant to our attempts to persuade him. Meaning a higher, higher bill that we have to pay. However, our king has 17 persuasion. Meaning we only have to pay him 10 rings. You can see that it says 40% off. If it was the prince, it would take 18 rings. Well, yeah, that's a pretty big jump. This is why you want good persuasion.
We'll hold off on that just for a second because we want Tillet to show up a little closer. He's right here. He, I don't want the king to run, run off all the way over there. They're going to show up right here anyways. Once the traitor shows up, we're going to get rolling into battle. So we are way ahead of the curve as far as following the tutorial gets you. We have all of the default technologies. We have a working mine. And we have 35 people. Now, 16 of them are doing nothing at the moment. That's okay. In fact, that's very okay for what we're about to do. <laughs> now, you may have noticed that I, we don't really talk much about the peasants because they don't really have much going for them. There's nothing. These are the two buttons here. There's no characteristics we need to worry about. No nothing. However, there's actually combat skill. So what we're going to do. Other than the trader and the tavern, we're going to go ahead and disable all of the servants and builders and everything. The reason for this is I want to figure out who has good stats. All right, that should... Oh, here we go, the mine. All right, that is all the jobs. So we're going to let the game run just for a little bit until everybody gets fired. And we have three people taking positions. I don't know what those positions are. Oh, wait, Slave Barn. There we go. And that leaves these two here, Trader. And, and you know what? We could actually disable that. And yeah, we'll disable that. We'll rehire in a minute. That should literally be all the jobs. There we go. 35 out of 35. Okay, the reason I did this is when you're drafting people, only unemployed peasants show up in this window. So anybody with a job does not show up. And we can see a bunch of ones in their stats. We don't care about those. No, we want the people with the biggest muscles. <laughs> so we're going to draft all of these extra bodies into our army. They're not going to be that thrilled about it, but it's okay, because some of them will probably die. <laughs> there we go. All the threes. Now we'll re-enable all of these jobs. The worker in the slave barn, that's the overseer who will put food in for the prisoners. Builders are the important ones, at least in the beginning of the game. missing anything? Probably not. Now, let's trade with him and hire him. Next up, we're going to hire all of these slaves who are more bodies. The ones that yearn for freedom, we'll go ahead and turn into warriors just to draft them in, but you might only want to spend money on slaves that do not want to want run away. They do not have a morale penalty for being a slave. Some of the ones that cost extra have combat skills. And if I don't have enough money, I'll, I'll cancel some of these orders. Actually, um, hold on, let me... I might actually not have enough money for all of this because I did hire quite a few... Um, mercenaries. So we'll start with those. Okay, so I can look up here and I see that I have four slaves. I have 18 soldiers. And if I were to make all of them warriors, which I'm not going to because I hired three that don't care about being slaves. So that really we have one slave who's going to be drafted. That's going to be 19 soldiers we need. We have 10 maces and 10 spears, so I don't actually need to buy any additional weapons unless I draft these guys. Let's go and spend money on our book. By the way, we have 44% difference in favor, meaning that we have a 40% price adjustment, which sounds marvelous, but really when you're buying in bulk, because if I were buying these books, it'd be 100 gold at default price. So I saved six gold a book. Ooh. All right, we want, let's go and start with a temple, to make our people happy, an herbalist to keep our people healthy, a scaffold because we're gonna be growing substantially. And I think that's about it for right now. The wood economic construction is really good. It's just really, Hideously expensive. I guess we could do that. I wouldn't really ever suggest the iron economical construction because realistically, it costs 300 gold, right? Even if it saves you 50% in consumption of iron, unless you're building 300 golds worth of well, actually 150, 
I guess 150 gold worth of iron. You don't need it. And it's eight a piece. All right. So let's see. What else do we need? Um, we will buy the medicine because that's always running low in the game. And then we're going to spend most of our money on armor. Even though these people will probably die in combat, the longer they stay alive, the more benefits we can get out of them. Armor does get destroyed in battle, but it does tend to outsurvive your slaves that you draft into war. We have enough weapons, so we're going to leave that alone. Though maces would be better for capturing more people. Hmm. What do we think here? Um, you know what? We did hire those, was it four mercenaries? I think there were four mercenaries. Let me double check that real quick. Army. Okay, yeah, four mercenaries. So we will actually get those four mercenaries uh, armed up because we don't want them to die. They cost us a lot of money. Go back to trading now. All right, that's going to cost us pretty much all of our money. So we need to sell something. I also want this paper. We need to sell something or we won't even be able to pay our peasants in the next round. So we're going to just pawn off some rutabagas. <laughs> now I have 21 peasants to pay. And we're not going to worry too much about our warriors right now because when they show back up, they'll be bringing home the booty. So with 21 peasants at five gold apiece, I'm going to need roughly a hundred bucks. If I spend 1,046, we're good. We're actually out of rutabagas with that one. What else can we sell him? Sell some lumber, even though we really need it for construction. Alright, that'll float us to the next day. Let's get going oh, to save the Princess Fair. We need to draft that slave right there. Have the prince load up on gear. Now I'm not I'm not 100% sure because I've only tested a few times, but I feel confident that these guys will get themselves the best armor. So the mercenaries should end up with the shields. And I think it's because the order they are placing the army in, but it might be their combat strength. All right, and then we need enough weapons for everybody. And there we go. This is an extremely stacked squad for the second day in the game. Look at that squad. This is 20 man deep with an average combat skill of six, which is, you know, you take all their at their points and divide it by the number of people in there. Any enemy squad is probably going to be about six people, five combat skill. We're about three times more than that, stronger than anybody we will face. We could actually just take over a city. Well, not take over. We could we could plunder cities at this point. We're going to go rescue our queen and these other people we're not going to worry too much about them but we now have an army capable of taking down everything in the game <laughs> and that, that that is our quick start yes we are basically broke that's okay because when we loot those bandits we're gonna come home with 300 gold and that'll float us another three days with this army we can do anything we want for the next three days additionally we have a powerful economy going on here we have 30 people while we do only have the one farm, we have like three lumber mills. I mean, there's there's not much we couldn't do with this power. So we're both militarily and economically powerful. I mean, I say that when we're pretty much dead broke, but you'll have to trust me on this. Money is just sitting in your coffers is good for a rainy day, but it's better to have spent it in video games. <laughs> This is Tillet. He joined our crew. He's the guy that we hired. We'll just have him study. Mm, we'll have him study the scaffold because we are going to be uh, rolling in criminals because our colony is going to be growing so big. 
the king is going to be studying the important stuff because till it will only stay for 10 days now the the demo will only let us play for 20 days and i don't plan on playing that long for this recording but i'm trying to show you the right techniques you don't want to give your important technologies to a guy who's just sticking around for 10 days now we only have four unemployed people we put all those bodies to good use So what we're doing is just waiting for night to pass. So let's wait for night to pass on this screen. It's a little more interesting to watch. And what we're also going to do, you don't want to do this too early because if the enemy intercepts you while you're bringing the queen back, she will just retreat and get the coward coward hurt or trait or characteristic, which will ruin her relationships with pretty much everybody. So now that they're almost there, we're going to go ahead and send someone in. Um, politics, withdraw from vassalage. And I'm just going to send this like, hey, you want to fight? Let's fight. This will give my army something to do later. I could have actually sent it earlier, but I was too much wrapped up in explaining about the military. So in your playthrough, maybe send that about the time you start sending your army out. We can see here that their total equipment value is 342. We have 10 times their equipment value. I would say equipment value is probably a fair assessment of how strong you are. I have tried even just sending the hero with level 17 combat strength to see if he could solo these guys. No, he cannot. <laughs> it's like they've already given up. One of my swords broke, apparently. Bunch of the spears I've broken. This guy's running away. We'll get him. Unfortunately, we can only get one target at a time. The leader stood back up. All right, now these um, labels are, are incorrect. It says 20 dismissed. I think that just means alive. We And we must have captured some. Uh, so this is probably captured, maybe? I'm not, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> but we did get three prisoners. And we got 300 gold, like I said we probably would. The hostage queen has been freed and will soon return to our city. So now she's part of this group. That's why our group went from 20 to 21. And because we're carrying slaves, we actually would not be able to outpace this army. So, yeah, I could have sent those these guys earlier, but you don't want your queen being caught by the Dust Valley army when they show up knocking on your door to say, you should still be our vassal. Um, why is the game... Oh, it is writing. It's just super slow on the screen. Now, I sent a messenger, and I've never seen them do anything to your nobleman. It's just that that's a really far way for your nobleman to go. So we'll, we'll send a regular person who does not need any skill checks. We can now make up. Oh, we do have not fin Have we not? What? Oh, because we need 80 wood. That's fine. So we'll put 95 there. And hot field. 91. Alright. So they're they're probably not going to be able to finish that job unless I show up with some wood, because I don't think they're gonna take it from the lumber mill. We're just gonna have them prioritize the hot field instead of partially attempt to finish this rye field. We will actually also want, with the remaining wood, to make a bar second barracks for their crew. Um, actually, you know what? I think we had like 24 people, didn't we? We're going to need another barracks after that. <laughs> we'll unprioritize this. And prioritize these two right here. So, everybody, so my soldiers have enough bed space.
Once I run low on unemployed peasants, I might consider removing the builders and giving them actual other jobs. But for the time being, this is fine. The queen and the prince have returned. And the odd thing is, pretty much anybody who's incapacitated, they're just going to slump down right here and everybody else is going to move on home. You can see here that like the queen and king are like, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. And this this guy, Kermit, <laughs> he's, he's in shock. Now, he does have an infected wound. We are actually going to click on the army screen. And anybody who did run away, they'll join us maybe a day or two after. And then they'll pop in. But the game won't make any announcements about it. Um, but we can see here that we have one body chalk outline right here. This basically means that we need one medicinal salve. So we're going to go to finance and put in one salve. Now, the prince and the queen have 50 loyalty, so we'll need to get that loyalty up as well. When they're happy, what we're going to do is we're going to threaten them. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. When they're when they're thrilled about working in our colony, we're going to remind them that, that the king is the boss. So we take a look at, say, the queen. We're not actually going to threaten her right now. We go to king options, and we can either give her five of my holy rings, which is basically your, your trophies of saying how awesome you are. Well... Um, actually, no, no, sorry. Uh, that's the wrong reward. Yeah, there we go. We'll give her five trophies, and she'll get 25 loyalty, and eight relationship with the king, and 20 mood status. Or we can threaten her, and she'll lose 18 mood status, but gain 80 loyalty now. Your loyalty will vary. The reason why she's going to get so much loyalty is this is king persuasion level 17. This is basically a one-shot max loyalty thing. <laughs> So we'll wait until they're happy. And then we're just like, hey, just so you know, I'm watching you. And if you think that's a little bit overdoing it, uh, by the way, the guide is pretty much, we're, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, I told you we'd take you through the first three days. But um, so I'll let the game kind of run in slow-mo while I talk. But that seems over overdoing it. But the game actually has no sense of loyalty or fid uh, fidelity. Is that the right word? Piety? I don't know. Um, so we are no longer vassal because they we, we told them, like, hey, buzz off. But anyways, uh, here's an example. The queen, in another playthrough I was running, just an experimental playthrough, she was at, like, 150 relationship with the king. And the king was, like, 100 relationship with her. And she was, she had the in love status. And the bishop shows up. The bishop is basically like this uh, hoity-toity extra noble person who you have to keep happy or he'll try to destroy your city. That's basically what it is. And he tries to go on a date with the queen. And I'm sure that if I didn't stop that, it would probably would have led to something else. During that same playthrough, the queen gave birth to a child. So she, the child's running around zero years old and the bishop chooses to go on a date with that child. <laughs> I have no commentary on that one. You just make of that what you will. So that is our first three days of the game. We are pretty much golden. With this army, you can go pillaging other cities for a thousand gold. You could convert them back to citizens. I mean, the sky's the limit at this point. Oh, uh, we didn't get to finish that barracks? Seriously? Oh, we're one iron short. And there's 10 iron in here. Like I said, they're not going to just drag it over and finish that off. No, no. It's like, it's not there at the beginning of the day. It doesn't exist. That's okay. Maybe not all of my warriors made it back. Oh, no, I think one of them died. Because I had 20 warriors, didn't I? No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I had 20. It was a 20-man army. But one of them was the, the prince. So, yeah, everybody made it back. 14 migrants have arrived. The king and queen are going on a date. I think that is a great place to leave off this uh, guide to starting off right. Thank you very much for watching Trans Guide to the First Three Days in Norland.